surrounding the economy here in Uganda, uh, the economy outside Uganda in the region, as well as the global economy. And of course, uh, we are going through difficult times as a country, uh, but also as a, as a global concern, uh, there are several challenges economically that the entire world is currently uh, grappling with. And definitely these and more are leading to various innovations in the business world. And if you want to know uh, what's happening in the world of business, 24 hours, seven days a week, uh, you definitely have to keep tuned on Smart 24 TV. And you sit back and we drive your business. Now, uh, this segment is called Financial Markets. And definitely here we look into uh, the markets that definitely are different from the commodity markets, uh, but also deal in trading and uh, sell, that is selling and buying of securities uh, that vary from the debt market, looking at the treasury bonds and the bills, also to the equity market and uh, the capital markets authority, uh, that is the regulator of the industry, and definitely a couple of other uh, people that are in the sector of financial markets, especially also in the commodities market, uh, will also be uh, looking at them. Thank you very much uh, for deciding to join us uh, this Wednesday morning. And of course, today uh, we're going to look at the markets as they closed yesterday, but one, because uh, definitely the Uganda Securities Exchange uh, has not updated as of uh, yesterday's markets. Uh, but we are still going to have a review of uh, the markets uh, definitely giving you an opportunity to uh, see uh, where the opportunities are for investment, uh, where you can actually be able to look uh, for future gain or for long-term uh, you know, investments uh, that you would want to uh, make at uh, this uh, particular uh, time. Now, uh, before we go any further, if you're new here, uh, you can visit our website at www.smart24tv. Uh, dot com uh, for more information uh, but you can also watch us uh, live on our youtube live stream uh, that is at smart 24 tv and uh, that is smart 24 tv live and then you can also follow us on twitter at smart 24 tv and then uh, the hashtag is also financial markets there on twitter my handle is anthony sebale and of course you always uh, catch uh, the latest on uh, my handle as well uh, giving you updates on uh, the financial markets world uh, but right now as i speak of course uh, there have been challenges uh, like i mentioned earlier in uh, the global systems economic systems and uh, various uh, people have come up to uh, probably uh, go against uh, some of the price inflations and uh, you know coming up maybe to with uh, you know street um, uh, maybe street rioting some people are going to uh, into the demonstrations and of course uh, these have not been allowed by the authorities uh, who are saying that people should keep on doing work as usual uh, but if you were to understand briefly uh, the background of this entire economic situation that we are coming into of course there are factors uh, that are within government's control but there are also fact side of government's control uh, that are affecting uh, the way the economy is around the world are doing. If you remember just about a year ago, we were locked down and the businesses were shut down and everyone was, meaning there was no productivity uh, or even uh, there was, is trying to make sure we make good use of the little money, the money we have uh, right now at our disposal. And one way you can uh, make good use of money is saving, but a better way of making good use of money is investing especially investing for uh, long-term gains. Uh, definitely many people have been able to testify that uh, saving is a quite good gains, and which uh, they actually do uh, in most cases. So uh, one way you can be able to avert uh, the dangers or the risks uh, that are surrounding the economic pressure at, at the moment right now is being able to look at money differently, look at money as an asset, uh, look at money as something that you are going to invest in for future gain. And uh, this way we can definitely uh, be able to overcome uh, some of these challenges. Of course, some of which are beyond uh, the government's control, beyond uh, the 
economists control, uh, but uh, within at least our personal or individual controls. You can at least uh, decide at home that, you know what, uh, we're going to start investing. Probably let's start with uh, investing in the treasury bond. We buy a little, a little bit of bonds. We buy a little bit of uh, stocks. We buy a little bit of property. And you try to see that uh, you divide yours into very small, small investments that uh, will bring in return in the long run. And definitely, uh, this is one where we are, uh, as a nation, going to be able to conquer. Talking about investment, uh, definitely here in the financial markets, we look into investing as uh, one of the best options uh, for economic growth. And in the financial markets world, uh, we invest in exactly four ways. And definitely number one is through the equities market. And in this equities market, we are looking at uh, investing in listed companies or equities. Uh, that is through buying shares. And these shares uh, could, of course, benefit us by giving us ownership, uh, part ownership in uh, big companies. Uh, but also, uh, they, in the long run, give us uh, a little bit of assets that we can actually use uh, for several uh, purposes. Uh, for example, if you would want to get a loan from a bank, there is an option of using your shares or your equity as a call to acquire a loan. So you can easily use your assets, which are the equities, uh, to acquire a loan, maybe to uh, inject into your business, money into your business, or maybe to acquire a salary loan, or maybe to acquire a, a loan, a mortgage, uh, to construct a house, and uh, this is one way people uh, reserve their. Uh, this is one way people reserve their money, uh, making sure that uh, this way are doing something, but also they can use it to be able to access more money. Uh, some people enter the market, of course, fit, and they also can wait for what we call the capital gain. And on the capital gain, we see people uh, trading, buying at and selling at higher prices. And this definitely comes to uh, movements in the market prices, which we monitor here almost every single day, uh, looking at how companies are, and also looking into the future uh, prospects and how the companies may be able to turn out in the future. Uh, definitely, this market is a risky market, and I have to mention that uh, there is no business without pause to be calculated uh, by an investor investing. You must be able to know how much risk you can take. Uh, there are people who uh, bought shares, for example, in MTN last year uh, at exactly 200 shillings. And right now, MTN has never gone back to that price. But there are also people who bought shares in MTN around uh, the month of February at around, around 160 uh, Ugandan shillings. And right now, the price is at uh, over 105, between 185 to 190. And uh, these people are, uh, have gained value on their stock. So the market is quite volatile, and I have to say that as a precautionary uh, statement, because many people think you can come to the stock market, uh, buy today, sell tomorrow, and then that's it. You're, 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 you're making millions of money. That's not the way it works. Um, it's it's a, a market that requires a, a little bit of patience. It's a market that looks at... Uh, getting uh, patient capital, making sure you're investing money you're not going to need in the short term. Otherwise, you might be disappointed for life because uh, these markets really do have risks. Uh, however, the higher the risk, as uh, the, of course, the term goes, sometimes the higher uh, the returns that come uh, with that investment. And so, uh, still, it, it is an attractive market. It is something you can wake up one day and the stock market has just moved in your favor. And all the companies you uh, decided to invest in are going upwards uh, in terms of value. And that way you're gaining value. But uh, that uh, so happens uh, at, at times. It doesn't always happen. It's not always the case. Uh, but as I say, you must be patient. You must be willing to wait. You must be willing to put in the time to learn how the markets work and uh, definitely you will be able to reap a uh, big in the long run. Many people have been conned. Uh, many people have been cheated uh, with, of course,
Ponzi schemes that have come, or pyramid schemes that have come up with uh, ways of conning people, saying that you can invest in this, and in the next 10 years, you're going to be, actually in the next two weeks, they usually don't have long-term uh, visions. So they usually have a very short-term uh, period of return, and they promise very huge profits uh, in a very short time. I can hardly believe such people, because uh, such businesses are usually uh, not uh, authentic, because uh, definitely usual authentic business involves risk and involves uh, having a calculated risk which can be uh, averted in some way, either by a regulator or uh, by other means around uh, the uh, investment. And so if you're investing in the equity market, uh, please be patient and make sure you're investing your residual income and not uh, the income you, you're going to need uh, tomorrow or uh, the next week. You must be investing for at least one year, you must be investing for at least two years and trying to see how uh, you can uh, be able to gain in that uh, long term. But also if you want in the short term, you could, uh, but that's a very risky move there to pull off on the uh, market. Now, uh, the market, as I said, we have the equity market, uh, we have the debt market, and in the debt market, uh, we are looking basically into loans. Uh, these loans are uh, given to government or bodies, corporate bodies, uh, that are, of course, uh, fast evaluated by the exchange and also the county uh, to find their uh, listing worthiness, to see if they are worthy to be listed on the exchange. And the official exchange here in Uganda is uh, the Uganda Securities Exchange. Our partners here are definitely whose data uh, we are able to use to give you this information. And uh, they're saying that for you to list on the exchange, you have to go through several scrutinies and to be able to uh, have access to these capital markets, you must go through various scrutiny, uh, scrutinies to see that you're able uh, to have value for your shareholders, you're able to uh, pay back your shareholders in case of you know, a gain or uh, you're able to actually give them bonus issues. There must be some incentives uh, somewhat to uh, your company so that it could be listed in, uh, on the Uganda Securities Exchange uh, for uh, that particular uh, gain. And currently, uh, we have several of these bonds uh, that are listed on the Uganda Securities Exchange. If you visit uh, the exchange website, you're able to view most of these. Uh, but of course, uh, these keep on changing because uh, Bank of Uganda auctions every after two weeks at least. They auction some treasury bills. They do this every after two weeks, of course, in closed doors, uh, because uh, in the presence of, uh, you have probably the exchange, you have stockbrokers, a bond that is worth, um, we can see a bond that is worth over 100 billion, uh, that was issued in, that was 50 billion, actually 100 billion, that was issued on the 25th of February 2015 and is set to expire on the 23rd of August, 2029. And uh, we can see that it's at a rate of 14.25. That's uh, just picking out as a demonstration of uh, how this really works. Uh, but you see that this bond is a 10-year bond, um, not 10 years, actually. We see it's about 15 years because 2029 uh, from 2015, you can see uh, those are about 15 years. And, um, and this bond in particular is at a coupon rate of 14.25%. Meaning, uh, if you buy the bond right now, you're able to get 15 or 14.25% of that every after six months. And this is how bonds work, really. You have uh, a bond, you buy your boat, you get coupon every after six months then at the end of the 10 years or the 15 years you get back your initial deposit and this is how uh, people are earning passively uh, without having to go for to work for government without having to uh, wake up in the morning and you know uh, you go dress and work at a certain ministry you have all of these um, uh, bonds that are listed that you can buy in and definitely keep value for your money because uh, like i say always here 
whenever you keep money or you store money under your bed, under your pillow, in that savings group with your village uh, mates uh, that keeps uh, the box under someone's uh, custody, you're losing value for that money. And um, some of the economic problems that we are complaining about could have been caused by us. I'm not saying entirely, but at least in part. Because if our currency uh, is not gaining value compared to other currencies, it tells something about how we use our currency, how we invest in our currency. How much have you put aside every month from your monthly earnings uh, that you're investing in very worthy assets? Assets like the financial markets, assets like uh, properties, assets like uh, bills and bonds and, and assets like uh, unit trusts or collective investment schemes. All these assets are here to see that we add a little extra value to our money. But the moment we keep the money uh, in our stores, in our beds, uh, we keep that money and that money, by the time we get it out, it is worth less. It is worth less than it would uh, be if at all that money was invested. Uh, of course, even uh, this is affected by many other factors according to the economics uh, of uh, the country and seeing how the economy runs. But still, this contributes something, a little bit of something to how the economy. If you imagine at least among us, the 45 million Ugandans today, if we had people investing at least 10, even if 5% of everyone's small income in the financial markets, how far would we have gone? How far would our currency have gone? How far would our GDP have gone? So these are very important assets uh, that require your attention. If you're a Ugandan, you must have an investment and land and property is not the only investment you can make. Uh, this is why financial markets are here, to give you alternatives uh, of investment, to give you alternative means of uh, capturing uh, that money that is idle, that is residual income uh, into useful assets uh, that can be used. As well, we also have the treasury bills. If you are a short-term investor and you would want to gain Back, uh, you get back to get back that money quickly that you're investing. The bills offer you the opportunity to be able to invest for a maximum of a year and a minimum of three months. We can have a three month, uh, then a six month, and a, and a 12 month bill. And all these come with interest rates, they come with an extra money. So you find, of course, they have less interest than the bonds because uh, they are short term and definitely. Uh, they are less risky as well. So you can find that maybe their coupons are much lower, but still they return some value, meaning they're adding value to your money. And you don't want to be keeping uh, money in your pockets uh, that is not earning you value. You must have investments uh, here and there and diversify these investments. The more you diversify these investments, uh, the more uh, you're going to see a value for your money, value increase uh, for your currency here in Uganda, and the more proud you're going to be of yourself at the end as you have made a very courageous move uh, in that direction. Of course, we look at the stock markets as well here, and uh, according to the Uganda Securities Exchange, we have about 18 listings locally here. Actually, 10, list, 10 local listings and 8 uh, cross listings, and all these companies are listed on the exchange uh, to give opportunity to the public to have stake in these companies by buying a share. A share, as I said, is a unit of ownership. And um, this unit of ownership gives you um, some sort of say or stake in the company uh, where you can even take part in decision making, uh, you can take part in election, uh, elections, uh, that is uh, electing new leaders, reappointments, approving reappointments. You can take part in uh, several other parts of uh, you know, decision making within uh, the, uh, the company that is listed. You're also mandated uh, to be present during uh, the annual general meeting for uh, the company when the company, of course, is unleashing their financial results uh, for the previous year or that very year. And you're able to have uh, an opinion as well. Uh, on these results and what should be done for the company to grow. That's one of the benefits of uh, the stock market, just being an owner. Imagine you being an owner of MTN, being an owner of 
a part owner of Stan Big Bank, uh, being a part owner of um, CIPLA, Quality Chemical Industries, sitting uh, with all the was scrutinized and been able to list on the exchange and uh, has come up with uh, these uh, several products that are helping the country, but also you being a part owner uh, is able to be proud of yourself as a part owner of the company, but also uh, gaining some passive income uh, via these channels of dividends, uh, bonus issues, rights issues, and the like. And definitely these are what uh, we call the financial markets. Uh, very well, welcome to the show. Uh, we're going to do uh, a little bit of uh, the stock market here on the show. But of course, uh, before that, uh, we are also going to look at who gained uh, most on Monday, that is the 25th of July, and also who lost on the market. And then we shall look at uh, the trading summary uh, here in Uganda and move across East Africa uh, to Nairobi, where we shall also be looking at uh, the NSE exchange, that is the Nairobi Securities Exchange, and how the companies over there also were able to fare. You don't have to invest only in Uganda or East Africa. There are several exchanges across Africa, and you shouldn't limit yourself uh, to how much you can invest. Uh, be able to be flexible uh, to come up with a very good uh, portfolio of investment uh, that will give you diversification of risk and that will give you also uh, more means of earning that extra uh, passive income. Uh, definitely, Otex East Africa uh, is our partner here, also uh, giving you a chance to trade on securities across East Africa that is dealing treasury bonds, talk about uh, treasury bills that we have just seen. Uh, you can do that with your Allows mobile you phone, and uh, you can right now with Zabu, uh, that is Otex East Africa, uh, do something new by dialing star 292 hash and uh, of course uh, you will all choose option one or two to buy or sell uh, you can choose the bond you can choose to learn more about the products and after selecting the favorite bond period uh, you're able to access your mobile money and be able to enter the amount of money you will be able to pay that is using your mtn line and when you enter that amount of money uh, they will purchase for you a bond and send you a notification uh, that you've been able to purchase uh, this uh, bond. More money, no hassle. Uh, Zabu, that is uh, the initiative with, of course, Altex East Africa and Altex uh, Clearing, uh, giving you this chance uh, to trade with your phone uh, without need to even access uh, the internet. Uh, thank you very much uh, for remaining with us. We are going to take a short break. Uh, when we return, we take a look at the stock market.